So Father's Day is around the corner and I've got a few videos planned up until it is Father's Day on masculine fragrances. So today I've got a video of 13 fragrances that are all under $36, but classic fragrances dating back to the 60s all the way to the early 2000s. If you buy the whole lot of these 13 fragrances, it'll cost you $315. So they're definitely under $36 each, but great smelling fragrances. Plus I've got a couple of bonus options as well. A bit more modern fragrances and still under $400 for all 15 fragrances. So if you love the idea of masculine fragrances and you like the classics, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yesterday we're talking about classic masculine fragrances that still smell great today. Obviously these have been reformulated, but these are their current formulations. These are fragrances that I've purchased online, mostly at FragranceNet, and they're definitely under $36 each. So if you have a dad that enjoys fragrances, or you're a dad, or you're just someone that enjoys classic fragrances, these are definitely fragrances you can check out because I've smelled them. They still smell great. Some do seem like they've gotten watered down for sure, but they don't smell bad. They still smell like what the fragrances originally smelled like. So as I was saying, 13 fragrances, $315 approximately. And if you end up buying all 15, still under $400. So 15 fragrances under 400. There's niche fragrances out there that you pay over $400. So this is a great lot of uh, fragrances that um, you can end up having. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go to a fragrance from the 1960s and it's an Italian house called Roberto Capucci. This is Capucci Por Homme. Let me show you the actual uh, bottle right here. It's a classic fragrance from 1967 and this is a citrus sheeper fragrance currently selling for about $25 uh, for 100 ml. So it's it's kind of a cheap packaging but the bottle is kind of cool looking and of course the scent is really great as well. Of course it features notes of oak moss, lavender, so aromatic notes and earthy notes with leather, lemons, lime, bergamot, anise, basil, tobacco, patchouli, cyclamen, jasmine, incense and more. So this is a very fresh fragrance but it does let, uh, you know settle to a leathery oak moss thing when it's drying down with a bit of bergamot, uh, not a bit of bergamot, I was gonna say with a bit of amber in the base. But for me, this is overwhelming with the citruses. So when you first spray it, there's that kind of tart citrusy astringency up top that's a reminiscent of a lot of cheaper fragrances from the old days. I really do like the bottle. It does come in a you know fairly cheap looking box and uh, this uh, actually is so cheap but the bottle fell through it thankfully it didn't break so I had to tape it but still it's about 25 bucks for a hundred Italian house Roberto Capucci and it's still a great smelling fragrance if you like the citrusy fragrances that are sheeper like definitely check that one out I think it'll satisfy so up next going to a house called Oscar de la Renta this is Poor Louis from 1980 so this is a fragrance I can't find a perfumer for I featured it now in various videos, no uh, no perfumer, uh, I, I can't find a perfumer. This is 90 ml for 20 bucks with the most amazing looking bottle. As you can see, it's a gorgeous looking bottle. I love this bottle. Uh, this has been reformulated. I've, obviously, all of these fragrances have been reformulated, but for me, this one still smells fantastic. Really, really love it. I would call this a leather fragrance. It came out in 1980, so it's uh, still fairly old but to me I think the reformulation here is great and if you have an older father and he's looking for some new fragrances and he probably remembers some of these fragrances I think these are going to make great gifts he'll remember you know stuff that he used to see back when he was young or if you're looking for some of the classics that um, people used to wear back then you're younger and things like that definitely check this one out so it's leather with aldehydes there's lavender juniper carnation oak moss patchouli cinnamon labdanum geranium basil caraway sandalwood so it's mostly a leather but it does have these kind of very aromatic fougere like qualities and of course it's got that aldehydes Perhaps it might remind you a little bit of something like Kuros from YSL because it's also featuring leather and aldehydes in that fragrance. But this is definitely unique. It doesn't, it doesn't have that kind of um, 
uh, smell of uh, Kuros's kind of uh, animalic qualities. This might have a bit of animalic qualities, but not as much of uh, not as much as Kuros does. But it's a great scent. If you don't know it, check it out. And it's for 20 bucks for 90 ml. I think it's totally worth it. It's a great, great fragrance. And to this day, I think uh, it still smells pretty darn good. So up next, going to the house called Perry Ellis, and we've got Perry Ellis for men. So on FragranceNet, there's a modern bottle of this fragrance and the classic bottle. The classic bottle is this, and it's a 150 ml bottle for 20 bucks. And the modern bottle, I believe, is 100 ml, uh, and it's a little pricier than uh, this as well. So this, to me, is a spicy, ambery fragrance, and definitely has been reformulated and watered down. But I, I really remember this fragrance because my dad wore it in the mid-80s. I didn't wear this when I was wearing Dracar Noir, but this one really means a lot to me because that bottle totally uh, takes me back to the 80s. And look at the cap right there. And for 20 bucks for 150 ml, sure, it's it's gotten reformulated, formulated but it's definitely an ambery fragrance and it does have the leather in here it has moss so oak moss and cloves and rose bergamot galbanum and and for sure it has vanilla so definitely something worth having in a collection i haven't smelled the new version so i don't know much about it but for me this takes me back to the 80s with this kind of uh, leathery ambery vanillic touches and of course the aromatics and spices so this is perry ellis for men uh, from 1985. Check that out if you don't know it. Up next, going to the house of Zeno Davidoff. This is Zeno Davidoff Eau de Toilette. I've recommended this one quite a bit. This one, just like the Poor Louis, uh, the smells are really, really great. Like they've kept it in great condition after all its reformulations. This came out in 86. Michelle Almarac created it, 125 ml bottle for 20 bucks. To me, it smells super fantastic. Here's the bottle. Uh, it's a um, it's a kind of a fougere for me, but more of an ambery patchouli esque fougere. So kind of going into the direction of an amber fougere, but more heavy on the patchouli. There's a bit of a light animalic thing happening in here. For me, this reminds me of fragrances like Balenciaga Pour Homme. It reminds me of fragrances like Givenchy, Gentleman from the early 70s, and then even something like a Heritage from Guerlain. So it's kind of in that ballpark where it's heavy on the patchouli. It's got the aromatics and then also sandalwood uh, and of course in this one they've got lavender rose bergamot musk geranium and amber it's a fantastic fragrance for 20 bucks I think it's awesome I can't believe how inexpensive this is for a 125 ml bottle because it still smells really really great so Zeno Davidoff EDT definitely a fragrance worth having if you're into classic fragrances and then moving on to this house it's not a house I really speak about in fact I don't know this house. I know they have, they're from France and they have very, very inexpensive fragrances. But this fragrance created by Mark Buxton selling for 10 bucks, I think still smells great. Uh, this is Coffin Lux Taxi. Are you familiar with it? This to me reminds me of uh, Dracar Noir. I didn't feature Dracar Noir in here because it's definitely higher priced than some of these fragrances. But this is kind of like a Dracar Noir. Uh, it was launched in the mid 80s from what I found, but I'm not 100% sure where the, when this came out exactly, so I'm putting it here. It features notes of star anise, ambergris, bergamot, nutmeg, sandalwood, and lavender. It's got a fun looking bottle, as you can see, with the taxi logo there. But to me, it totally takes me back to the mid 80s when I was wearing Dracar Noir. Sure, the notes don't match, but the smells kind of match, and that reminds me of uh, Dracar Noir and sort of kind of color. Uh, a, b a bottle as well here. It's a cheap bottle. I don't have a box for it, but um, I think it smells great. And if you're into very, very inexpensive fragrances, check this one out. As I said, it's 10 bucks on FragranceNet uh, and uh, totally, totally worth it, I think, for the price, especially if you're into less expensive or budget cheap, uh, inexpensive fragrances. So this next fragrance launched in 1985, and this is a fragrance that has a lot of memories for me because when I was going to high school, I worked for a dry cleaning store and a lot of businessmen dropped off their shirts for laundry and I would smell this fragrance on all of those shirts. I don't know, I think I worked around the time when this had just launched and it totally takes me back to when I was in my teens working in a dry cleaning store. This is Hugo Boss's Boss Number 1. Are you guys familiar with this? This is created by Pierre Wargnay 
who I really admire in fragrances uh, as a perfumer. He also created one of my all-time favorite fragrances, uh, Dracar Noir. And this is 100 ml for $29. Really great price. And to me, it's uh, it's kind of a fougere fragrance once again, but a tobacco-ish fougere. And to me, the smell is really, really great. It's been watered down, but I think it's uh, still smelling like I remember. And as I was saying, those shirts that came in to be laundered or dry cleaned, I could smell this fragrance all over it. And in the 80s, the fragrances really lasted, like lasted for days and days and days, especially if you put it on clothes. And I mean, you could smell it. I mean, you you get a pile of clothes and it's in a, you know, a basket. You're walking by it, you can still smell it. But this stuff is, Fantastic. It smells really, really great with tobacco, honey, oak moss, patchouli, lavender, sandalwood, rose, musk, amber, cinnamon, loads of notes. Really beautiful, really great smelling, very fougere like with tobacco. So there's a bit of a dirty ashiness there, but to me, the honey cleans it all up and makes for a wonderful wearing experience. Of course, all these fragrances, you're probably gonna see oak moss, it's prominent. They used quite a bit of it back then, but obviously with IFRA regulations in the late 2000s, early 2010s, it's less and less being used. But either way, Hugo Boss, Boss number one, amazing fragrance, very historic for me and has a lot of meaning for me because I really, really love that, love, love, love that fragrance. So up next, going to the house of Ceruti or Ceruti. This is 1881 from 1990 and it created by Martin Gras. This is a tester I bought, so I don't have a cap for it, sadly, but a big fan of this 1881 logo with the frosted glass here, as you can see. So it has Ceruti 1881 written right there. And this is actually a fragrance that launched in 1990. I believe it was redone in the 2000s. But for me, once again, it's kind of like a very citrusy, aromatic fragrance, kind of going into the sheeper genre, uh, sheeper direction, and uh, a wonderful fragrance. Created by Martin Gras. This is 100 ml for 27. And if I did not mention the price for the Hugo Boss, it's 29 bucks for 100 ml. But Chir Chiruti or Ceruti 1881 has notes of cypress, bergamot, black currant, patchouli, ylang ylang, oak moss, pine, and sandalwood. Yeah, you can't get away from oak moss with these classic fragrances. And it's definitely something I really enjoy in fragrances. It's too bad it was banned or limited in the amount it could be used but it made fragrances really masculine for me and definitely very distinct in those days. Uh, they are now reusing uh, or figuring out ways to use uh, uh, oak moss because they know scientifically how to remove certain parts of the oak moss, but it's not the same. And some of these classic fragrances, even though they've been removed, the, the oak moss has been removed, they're still the because they've been uh, reformulated, but there's still, still the reminder of those days when uh, these fragrances had tons and tons of oak moss. But either way, this is a fantastic fragrance. It's more on the fresh side, but definitely very woody, aromatic, citrusy, and herbal with the uh, all the notes that's in here. So it's uh, Ceruti 1881. Is it Ceruti or is it Ceruti? I think it's Ceruti, but let me know uh, so I can uh, make sure I say it correctly. And next, go into the house of Rocha. This was actually featured in my budget uh, citrus uh, summer fragrances video. This is Eau de Rocha uh, Ohm. Eau de Rocha Ohm uh, launched in 1993 and currently sells for 100 ml $36. So this is created by Nicholas Mamunas. I think that's how you say his name. And it features notes of lemons, lime, lemon verbena, bergamot, aldehydes, basil, mandarin, coriander, vetiver, oak moss, carnation, jasmine, lily of the valley. So this is a fragrance in that similar style of Eau Sauvage. So very citrusy, very aromatic, lightly woody. This one goes a bit more lemony and tart compared to Eau Sauvage, uh, the current formulation of Eau Sauvage, but it's a very, very refreshing fragrance and very, very classic. To me, it smells very, very modern, even though it came out, well, I guess it came out 30 years ago in 1993. But to this day, it still smells great to me and I absolutely love it, especially when it's warm outside. You can totally liberally spray the stuff on and smell fantastic. But either way, Rocha Odorosha Ohm, a great fragrance. 
uh, from 30 years ago and currently 100 ml for 36 bucks. And then this fragrance, I can't figure out the actual launch date, but I was doing some research, research and I read some places that it launched around the mid 90s. This is Jean-Louis Verme, Verme Pour Homme, this one right here. So 100 ml for 18 bucks. So this is kind of like an amber fougere for me, more in the fougere direction, but has definitely amber qualities as well. Go figure, oak moss once again, and this time galbanum, blackcurrant, carnation, geranium, patchouli, musk, vetiver, violet leaves, jasmine, coriander, mandarin, and bergamot. Lots of stuff going on in here. To me, it, it, there's something in here that's a bit of a reminder of an amber fougere, even though they don't have a lot of amber ambery kind of notes in there, warm notes. For me, it's uh, lots of aromatics, so there's definitely the idea of loads of aromatics for sure. And then you've got this galbanum, which has this greenness. Of course, the oak moss is in here once again, and whatever kind of oak moss they can put in here. So it's woody, it's aromatic, and it's also a bit ozonic and very, very green, but smells fantastic. Very old school. To me, it doesn't smell like a fragrance that came out in the mid 90s, but that's what I was reading. Uh, this came out in the mid 90s. To me, it smells more like 80s for sure but either way I like the look of the bottle it's very classic and vintage looking kind of like a cigarette lighter and then the fragrance itself uh, is very old school uh, classic fragrance so this is Jean-Louis Verme Verme Pour Homme let me know if you know that house it's not a house I speak too much about uh, but put a comment down let me know what you think about the house that fragrance and if there's anything else I should check out from that house and then this next fragrance is probably what kind of was inspired by the woman's angel uh, and then this is probably the inspiration for the male uh, Mugler angel which became a man I'm talking about Animal Animal by Animal uh, from 1994 and you can buy a current bottle for 100 ml for like $30 I should say uh, it's a bit tough to get this bottle out but absolutely love this to me it kind of reminded me of pure malt and pure Havan together uh, with the original Amen as well. Here's the bottle right here, and this is um, a bottle I've had for quite some time. Uh, it's got loads of boozy notes with honey, pineapple, vanilla, tobacco, patchouli, amber, nutmeg, lavender, sandalwood, musk, lime, galbanum, ylang ylang, cedar, rose. But to me, as I was saying, this came two years after Woman's Mugler Angel launched and two years prior to Men's Amen or Angel Men launching. So it came right in the middle and I feel like this was inspired by Angel for Women or kind of like they, they were inspired by the whole gourmand thing because this is very gourmand to me for 1994. And then maybe a, a man thought, okay, this smells really great. Let's do something similar for men. Uh, I don't know, I'm just making this kind of stuff up, but I feel like it's very Mugler-esque kind of a fragrance, but super delicious and really a kind of, kind of boozy, tobacco-ish and honeyed and fruity at the same time. So Animal Animal for men. A wonderful fragrance, I think. It still smells great today. If you're looking for something like pure malt or pure Havan from Mugler, I, I would go with this because uh, it reminds me of those two fragrances all rolled into one. Up next, go into the house of Boucheron from 1998. This is uh, Jaipur Pour Homme, or it's actually Jaipur Homme from 1998, 100 ml for $35. And this is created by Anique Minardo, this one right here. What a wonderful fragrance this is. Very ambery, very spicy, a resinous and a bit, I wouldn't say gourmand, but I think some of the notes have these gourmand qualities. Very holiday spice with the whole fact that there's loads of cinnamon here. Carnation acts a bit like clove, so I think the cinnamon clove-like qualities give me the holiday-ish vibe, but it's very, very ambery. Some floral touches, also some fougere touches in there as well. I like an amber fougere because there's this whole lavendery vibe in here. And of course the, the, the carnation gives me the kind of a kind of a vibe as well, but it smells fantastic and it's a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Very warm, very spicy. Boucheron, Jaipur, Om, a wonderful fragrance. This is the EDP version. I never, I don't remember the EDT. It might be a lot fresher. I kind of like my fragrances to be a little more heavier, so I like the EDP version of fragrances, and this smells fantastic today. Yes, it's gotten watered down, but to me, it totally reminds me of uh, the whole uh, late 90s. This fragrance also kind of reminds me a little bit of Le Mail from Jean-Paul Gaultier. Uh, even though I don't think they mentioned there's lavender in here, I get a lavenderish vibe in here. So because of that, it kind of has that kind of reminder of something like uh, 
uh, La Mail from Jean-Paul Gaultier. Either way, it's a Jaipur Om from Boucheron, the EDP version. Up next, going to the house of Paul Smith. This is Paul Smith Men from 2000. This may, uh, brings back so many memories for me and I absolutely love it. It's a great gym scent currently because it's very fresh and uh, ozonic. This is a fragrance created by Alain Astori along with Nathalie Lorson. So Nathalie Lorson must have been very young when she created this with Alain Astori. $26 for 100 ml. It's a super fresh fragrance. If you like green leafy, grassy kind of fragrances, definitely check this one out. And as I said, it's perfect for the gym. I actually have an extra one, a tester that I bought for around 17 bucks that's in my gym bag when I go to the gym. It's a very easy uh, spritz, but this has loads of violet leaves, basil, bergamot, vetiver, oranges, lavender, hyacinth, geranium, ginger, musk, sandalwood, and oak moss. To me, I wore this in the late 2001, 2002, and totally, totally takes me back to that era. And I remember with the whole Y2K and 9-11 uh, and all that stuff totally takes me back to that era. But a wonderful ozonic fragrance, really fresh and refreshing. It's violet leaves, so it's quite ozonic and watery and refreshing. So Paul Smith Men, uh, a great fragrance. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. As I said, it makes a great gym fragrance because it's so watery and fresh, ozonic and, uh, you know, crisp. So for 26 bucks in your gym bag, I think it's totally Totally worth it. And then next, going to the house of Lam Van. This is Oxygen Ohm, uh, a fragrance created by Alberto Moria. Uh, this is a very fresh cypress forward aromatic fragrance. Here's uh, the fragrance. It has kind of reminders of. Um, um, there's a Tom Ford fragrance. I'm drawing a blank with the name. If I think of it, I'll mention it. But um, there's also the Aqua di Parma Cipresso di Toscana has a bit of a reminder of that. If you like Cypress in fragrances, this is definitely going to satisfy. Launched in 2001, 100ml for $19. This is a great, great price. Once again, you can wear this to the gym as well. It might be a bit more complex than the Paul Smith, but this is Cypress with fir resin. There's juniper berries, there's cedar, there's white musk, myrtle, coriander, artemisia. So for me, it's a very herbal aromatic fresh fragrance and with some citruses and musks and some woods it's, it's kind of light but aromatic fresh refreshing invigorating all that kind of stuff and if you're into the idea of uh, easy to wear fragrances this will totally satisfy uh, Lanvin Oxygen Ohm from 2001 uh, created by Alberto Moria's uh, 19 bucks for 100 ml I think is totally totally worth it but either way these are the 13 fragrances that I wanted to highlight for someone looking to buy a dad some Father's Day presents uh, the whole lot for 13 of them is 315 but obviously every single one of these is under $36 they've all uh, been tested by me they all still smell great today uh, although you got to be into old school classic men's fragrances because obviously uh, these these came out uh, um, you know, the um, the youngest ones are like 20 plus years old and then we've got 30, 40 years old, uh, 40 year old fragrances. But either way guys, thanks so much for watching this video today. Let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Do you have them? Have you been wanting them? And if you don't like them, I'd like to find out what you think about these fragrances. Please put a comment down below. And then as I said, there's a couple of more bonus options. Stay tuned. Uh, that will still equal under $400 for a whole lot of 15 fragrances. But either way, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. All right, we've got those two bonus options. As I was saying, here is a great, great fragrance from the house of Ted Lapidus. We are now going into a more uh, modern era of fragrances. This is from 2007, and it's uh, Altamir from uh, Ted Lapidus. Have you guys tried this one? So I'm, I'm actually offering up a lot of fragrances that I haven't spoken much about on the channel. So this is a, a day for those kind of fragrances. And this is a great buy for 100 ml, $23. For me, this is kind of a great a fragrance as an alternative for Gautier 2. Remember the fragrance that was two bottles together, which they just relaunched and I haven't been able to get my hands on. But this reminds me of that because it's kind of a warm, ambery fragrance with uh, the orange blossom neroli kind of uh, notes. 
smells super delicious. It's for men. It kind of might lean for, uh, you know, unisex to, uh, you know, have a bit of a feminine leaning, but to, to me, the smell is fantastic. It has notes of tonka beans, amber, orange blossom, neroli, pineapple leaves, musk, patchouli, teak wood, vetiver, jasmine, cyclamen. So this fantastic fragrance, it smells super delicious. It's an amber floral, but for men and for 100 ml, 23 bucks, really, really great. Let me know if you've tried this one, Altamir from the house of Ted Lapidus. And then we're gonna end the video with Lolita Lempicas Amasculin slash Ohm. So Amasculin is no longer, they rebranded the fragrance as Ohm, originally launched in 2000, created by uh, Anique Minardo once again, and they, re they brought this back. Uh, in 2018 as uh, Lolita Lempica um, Ohm is what I should say. 100 ml for $36 currently. It has notes of licorice, anise, wormwood, rum, almonds, sugar, violet, vanilla, musk, cedar, labanum, rose, orange blossom, ivy. To me, this is a very soft, spicy fragrance. If you like the idea of licorice, anise, wormwood combined together, if you like that smell, this is definitely fragrance featuring or highlighting that but it's a soft spicy with spices. There's aromatics here, boozy notes and vanillic warm notes and a perfect fragrance if you're looking for something that's warmer to wear and a bit more modern than some of the stuff I was talking about. But either way, Lempica Ohm is great, great fragrance. If you bought the whole lot of fragrances, the 15 of them, uh, under $400, so you'd be spending $374. Imagine if you got, you know, a you know, whole lot of fragrances as a gift, 15 bottles, uh, and uh, somebody was like raving about how great the fragrances are. That would be great uh, for me if I if I got these as a gift and I wasn't really, you know, in the hobby of fragrances and somebody gifted these fragrances to me. And yes, I had an open palette. I appreciated fragrances from all eras. This would be an amazing, amazing gift for me. And of course, 15 bottles for under $400 totally totally awesome anyway this these will make great father's day gifts i should say anyway thanks so much for watching see you later bye bye